Hello, this is part three of Sonic the Hedgehog, the two-wheel balancing robot. So this balance is a bit like a Segway or hoverboard, but additionally, it's got knees that bend, and that means it can lean side to side as it goes around corners. And I've also installed load cells in the legs, so check out the last part for information on that. But that essentially means I can use the legs like weighing scales to measure the load on each leg, and then I can adjust those legs accordingly, so we can make it a bit like active suspension. There are no springs in this system, so we're actively driving driving those ball screws in relation to the load on each leg. So this time we've got to put the arms on and some other cosmetic parts, and then we're going to go and give it a proper test in a big outside open area. This video isn't sponsored, but this is just a quick ad for ways you can support the channel, and that makes all the difference to the projects. I have Patreon and YouTube channel membership where you can get access to all my videos early and sneak peeks and pictures of what's coming up. There's also some affiliate links in the description, and if you use those to buy something or sign up for something, then I'll get some money, but it won't cost you any more. There's a free trial sign up for Skillshare, a link for Matter Hackers 3D Printing Supplies, my Amazon affiliate links, and also a link for a free trial for Epidemic Sound, which is where the music comes from in my YouTube videos, and that's quite a good reasonable service. It doesn't cost very much if you've got a YouTube channel and you want to put some music in it. I also have my merchandise store, including t-shirts for Performance Robots, Open Dog, and lots of other things that I've made, so don't forget to check that out as well. All right, let's get back to the project. The first thing I've done is made a cover for the electronics. Check out the last video to find out what's going on in here. But here's the first cosmetic panel, which looks like Sonic's tummy. I've also made covers for the load cell electronics there. So that covers each of the load cell electronics boards, which is a Teensy 3.2, the amp and the CAN bus transceiver that sends that data back to the master controller. And again, I talked quite a lot about this in the last video. Around the back, I've put a nice handle so I can hold this and I can pick the whole thing up. And that makes it much easier to get it balancing. That also covers the emergency stop button and the initialization buttons. At the bottom, we've got a little bum plate here, which holds the batteries in. And I've also put some Ninja Flex stoppers on the end of the extrusion there. That's printed in flexible filament. That just stops me snagging my hands on the sharp ends of the extrusions. So we need to put Sonic's arms on. And in this video and in this version of the robot, they're just basically going to be for cosmetic purposes. So they're going to move. They're going to be on hubs driven by servos. But they're not actually going to be used for balancing the robot. It would be good to come back and do some R&D on having heavier mass on the arms with more powerful motors being able to use that actually for balancing and for going over obstacles and going over uneven terrain. But for now, it's just for cosmetic purposes. So we've got a little shoulder assembly, which is a servo with a T5 pulley on it. And I've just attached that T5 pulley to the normal servo horn. So that's fitted on and it's got the screw holding it on. And then we've got this hub. So I've got the actual shoulder here, which is going to fit over like so. That's just going to run plastic on plastic. And I might put some silicon grease in, but that should be fine, really. It's quite free moving. And of course, this doesn't have to go round and round and round and round because it's only going to move the arm a little bit. So we can use some T5 pulley around the pulley on there and we can tie that off onto this piece so that it can move it either side we get that gear ratio which is about two to one and we can move the arm there with the servo and we're using the belt so in case the arm takes a shock if the robot falls over hopefully the belt will skip and it won't just break the servo so i've just tied that belt off with zip ties to the two handles that i left there so that seems to work pretty well so these mechanisms just slot onto the extrusion that I left there and I've left a T-nut in there with a screw so that we can pop that on and tighten it up. So I've just linked those arms to the steering. So as he turns left in this direction, the right arm comes forward and the left one goes back. And obviously when it turns right, it's going to do the opposite. And that's about it really. It doesn't do anything else. It's just for show. Well, he's going to need a head, isn't he? So I've made this foam sort of head here, which is basically the shape of the inside of this mask. It's all Velcroed onto the chassis, and that means he can wear this mask. 
Yeah, that's probably temporary. What I'd like to do is come back in the future and put a proper robot head in with sensors, perhaps a LiDAR and some other sensors, and see if we can actually get this to navigate and things like that. But for now, that will do. So that went okay. It's quite enjoyable to drive around if you're going forwards and drive and steer between things and it leans side to side and that part works well so I'm quite happy with that. But actually this project was R&D to test the load cells that are in the leg and see if we can make the motors react like actual suspension. So I deliberately used ball screws that can't be back driven to see if we can actually get a reaction from the sensors in the leg to see if they're dynamic enough. So it's not too bad going over the bumps. It seems to absorb them okay, but actually you can see in the footage at the back of the robot, those actuators don't move much at all till it lands on the ground and then they help balance it out, which is a bit like how suspension works. And this is R&D for Open Dog, which has the same type of actuator to see if we could put those load cells in the legs to make it more dynamic or at least more forgiving if I don't program it right during the R&D. At the moment, I'm not sure if that's actually gonna be beneficial or we should just use foot switches to uh, make that leg comply and stop when it hits the ground or to slow down the motion or something like that. So I need to give that some more thought. That was ultimately the purpose of this project. I think that the dogs I did, which actually had back drivable gearboxes, were probably more dynamic, so check those videos out. But that's something I have to think about in the open dog development, which is ongoing. So there were quite a few more crashes, which resulted in one of the legs breaking off in the end completely. The IMU getting skewed because the electronics were not at the correct angle and therefore it ran off into the hedge at the end and that completely broke the leg. So it's quite a lot more crashes I'm gonna put in the outro to this video, which weren't in that edit. There are a couple and that was mainly down to three things. One of those was my driving. The other one was that actually the motors can't go fast enough for the maximum angle I can achieve by pushing forward on the stick, which means it face plants quite a lot. So I need to have a look at the maximum speeds we've got on those motors and probably constrain that angle to several degrees less so it can't run away with itself. Also, the position hold doesn't work very well, so it does actually run away downhill, and that whole piece of land, you can't really tell in the video, is actually curved. So when you're running away from the middle, it tends to run downhill and run off with itself, which isn't very good, and I need to sort that out. The other issue I had, in fact, was that the steering is reversed when you drive backwards due to the way the differential drive works. So I actually reversed it again in code, so when I'm pulling back on the stick, it puts the steering the white way round. But that does mean that if I'm driving forwards and I pull back on the stick, to stop quickly, and I'm also steering, it suddenly moves the other leg and it bends the out, outways the wrong way on the bend, and that actually causes it to fall over, and that's why the arm snapped off. So that's something else I probably just need to remove and just remember the steering's the wrong way around, so if I pull back suddenly, it doesn't suddenly steer the wrong way. I am gonna come back and do another episode to try and solve all those issues, and we're gonna do a deep dive into the code 
uh, which pretty much everything's controlled in software. So um, there's a few things to sort out there. Also had some problems with the radio range due to the proximity of the aerial next to the brushless motors that I need to investigate as well, perhaps with another RC system. So that's going to be the subject of another video, as well as potentially putting some sensing on. So I've picked up a LiDAR, which is a laser scanning rangefinder, and we're going to put that on it to see if we can do obstacle avoidance. So this is going to be an ongoing development platform. We're probably going to take Sonic's head off and just make it into a generic robot. But I think that's going to be quite good. And I really want to get onto that sort of navigation and obstacle avoidance and sensor integration, which so far we haven't done with Open Dog because it doesn't actually walk along. So that's all for this video. Don't forget to subscribe for more updates on this and the other projects and some other stuff that's coming up next week. All right, that's all for now. Oh, oh no. Oh. Oh. That's the end now. Oh no.